Now joining me in the studio to discuss this is uh, Lulu Elegbe, Melissa Political Analyst, and of course, Dr. Olamide Okulaja, who is the Director of Advocacy and Communication Farm Access Foundation. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi, good morning. And good to have you this morning. Um, so we are here talking about coronavirus. First of all, let's start with you, Doctor. Should we be worried? I mean, you know, when you actually be worried, that is um, a bit uh, subjective. You have to look at it from different perspectives. Right. Uh, one of the things that I'm very um, confident about is since the last outbreak of the Ebola virus in Lagos State, a lot of concerted efforts have been made by the Lagos State government to um, develop systems that will be able to absorb um, situations such as the Ebola virus that, that came into Lagos at that time. And because of this, you know, Lagos State has now commenced, well, it commenced the building and the equipping of a BL3, a BSL3 lab, um, you know, center where you can sort of isolate over 100 patients and also a laboratory and all of that, um, that can sort of help in containing these um, virus outbreaks. Um, the Lagos State government has also made uh, concerted efforts with the uh, Mr. Governor himself being the Chief Incident Officer mm -hmm. and the Honorable Commissioner being the Deputy um, Incident Officer in putting together a team that can help monitor the progress of um, the COVID-19 uh, uh, disease across the world and also as it comes into um, uh, areas such as Nigeria. Um, the case that came in, the Italian that came in, um, it's something that uh, could have been prevented but also may, could not have been prevented in terms of um, the, the way the disease elaborates when it starts. It's very difficult to pick up um, a disease when it is not in its active phase. Mm -hmm. And so um, the important thing is, do we have systems that can absorb um, outbreaks such as this when they do happen? And I think that Lagos State has uh, sort of developed a system that can mitigate uh, situations such as the coronavirus. So essentially outbreak. you're saying, yes, it can be managed, there is no cause for alarm? Absolutely. I think, I think that, you know, a, a lot of times um, because of the fake news that goes around and because of, uh, you know, unregulated media that is out there, they actually cause more harm than good mm -hmm. and, you know, spiral into several activities that people partake in, in a bid to protect themselves from these viruses or these uh, infections based on their own knowledge. And so, you know, it's important that we do not panic mm -hmm. as a people, which we are very used to doing. And we are very, um, we, we remain informed uh, about um, the progress of whatever is happening from reliable sources, especially from government officials. All right, okay, and that's why we are also here as media to be able to spread uh, the facts and not the fear. I'll come to you, uh, Mr. Lebe. As a Nigerian, you've seen um, the whole thing going on about wearing masks and how uh, there's increase, sudden increase in the cost of sanitizers and mm. you know uh, masks. How do you respond to this? When we have emergencies, is that the best way to go? as a people? Well, for me, it's two things. Um, <laughs> there's the business side and there's the human side. So right. if you look at it from the business perspective, it's just a question of supply and demand. When there's demand, prices go up. That's basic economics. But, the same, but on the human side, when businesses start to cash in on health crisis in a country, then it's, there's, the, the, I think they're morally or ethically shaky ground there. Mm -hmm. Um, because where you have an outbreak, um, there are certain things that will be, will be needed, both whether it's by hospitals, by governments. If businesses are in, the, are in the practice of suddenly hiking those prices to cash in on those moments, then that's not a good thing for us. If anything, I think they should even be discounting them mm -hmm. at the moment because, again, it's the human factor. Even though, yes, I can understand the business side of that, but it's like, I mean, it's like World War, doing any of the World Wars where they call them, I think they call them profiteers. 
um, war brings certain kinds of opportunities mm -hmm. and people try to cash in, cash in as much as possible. While on the business side, there's nothing wrong with that. But on the human side, it's, it's, it's a no-no. It's not something you do, but that's what's happening. We've heard of sanitizers going from 1,500 Naira to 19,000 Naira. Yes. I'm not sure if I owned a pharmacy or a store that sold that, I'm not sure how I'd be able to justify that to my conscience. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not um, sanitizers are effective is a separate question, mm -hmm. but, when, but because there's the perception that, as long, that if you have that, it increases your chances of, um, of dealing with the virus. And if you then decide you're going to cash in on that, I don't think that's somewhere we need to be as a country. All right. Thank you for that intervention. Now, let's come back to you again now, Dr. Okulaja. And we're talking about prevention. Um, <coughs> it's important, like we earlier established, that we stick to facts and not fear. Mm. Now, we've also heard about uh, chloroquine um, being um, one of the things we don't know. Can mm. you establish for us what is the reality? What's the use of chloroquine? Is there a cure? And should we go that way? That's one. Uh, yeah. The second thing also is the fact that, you know, because of the way uh, this is happening and the way we are in Nigeria, we've also heard people saying, now you should just stay on your own and there's no, you shouldn't be mixing and all of that. Please use this opportunity to clarify on that. What's the role of chloroquine and how do we go about our daily movement moving forward? Okay. So um, it's... One of the things that you know, I'd mentioned earlier in terms of people reacting in a way that may not exactly benefit them mm -hmm. in response to a situation that they are not very familiar with. So yes, there have been a lot of rumors out there that chloroquine can treat or cure this disease. This is not confirmed, it's not evidence-based. Mm -hmm. And so a, a lot of health of authorities have um, dissuaded people from doing this. Uh, they are ongoing. Um, studies and researches and productions of different methods mm -hmm. um, that can help in mitigating the spread of this disease. Of course, we've heard about what's going on in Israel and all of that. Right. And they're still, the, the, the vaccines and the treatments are still in testing. They're not yet out. So as of today, we do not have any confirmed, you know, treatments mm -hmm. for this um, disease except to monitor and give um, symptomatic support to, to the patient. Mm -hmm. It's also very important to understand that the, the coronavirus um, uh, infect, infection is not as fatal as a lot of people are posting it that. out there. Okay. Um, we have had more infections that are more uh, fatal in, in terms of their prognosis. And, you know, it, out of 85,000, you had only about a thousand and uh, you know and about just 2, about two thousand yes. deaths, which of course is significant because we don't want <clears throat> we don't want any situation where people die. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you've had over thirty six thousand people that have recovered, and in fact, the the case that is in Lagos right now, over the next one or two weeks, um, this patient will be released. Are you confident about that? I, well, I spoke to the health authorities mm -hmm. and, they, they, and they said that as of today, um, the Italian has not developed any complications. He's recovering. He has a mild fever. Um, but over the next one or two weeks, once they find out that there is no uh, virus in his system, they would release him back into, um, into society and, uh, you know, and enable him to travel back to Italy where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that even shows that the only case that we have in Nigeria over the next couple of days may actually, you know, um, recover from this ailment mm -hmm. and, you know, be free to, to go away. Um, so uh, as far as I'm concerned right now, no, no real treatment. Chloroquine does not have any effect. It's also as, as um, foolhardy as drinking salt water during mm -hmm. Ebola. Uh, you just end up giving yourself hypertension. If you keep taking chloroquine, you end up giving yourself some liver disease. Um, you know, so it's important that we are very careful mm -hmm. in our approach in managing this situation. All right, uh, Mr. Lulu, as uh, Mr. Legarada, as in Nigeria, are you worried about moving around, mixing with people, going to crowded areas? You know, um, during this time. Um, no, am I worried? No, not really. But at the same time, I think we need to. We just need to be careful. Um, 
because one of um, one of the things I think one of the worrying things, if, if anything, if I worry about anything, is the fact that the symptoms of coronavirus and other flus are quite similar. Yeah. So whether it's a cold, whether it's sneezing or whatever it is, sweating, fever. So if you come in contact with someone who's ill, it could be anything. And because of what we know today, um, we're just not sure. Mm. So the best thing is just to be careful. Wash your hands as um, basic as, hygiene. Yeah, basic hygiene. So just be careful. Don't. There's no need to. If someone is sneezing or coughing around you, um, you don't need to be <laughs> shaking hands with that person. Right. So it's those sorts of things. As long as we can take those basic steps, mm -hmm. then I think we, we should be fine. Right. All right. Uh, let me again come back to you. I, I know you are almost confident, you know, to say that we don't have a real problem or the way we perceive it. Uh, putting this in context, um, is this as fatal as other things we've seen in the past? Like uh, some people are already saying that we couldn't contain Lassa fever. I'm not saying that Lassa fever is, is small. How much more this? Help us, you know, make the comparison between, you know, maybe Lassa fever, Ebola, and then uh, coronavirus. Um, you see, uh, for me, I, I like to look at things from a bigger perspective. Okay. Um, one of the things that we must be clear about is uh, our health systems, right? Can do we have health systems that can um, contain a major outbreak, mm. whether it's Lassa fever, Ebola, coronavirus, and all of that? Um, objectively, no, we don't. Um, we have systems that can help mitigate it, but. In a wider in, in a wider picture, you see, we as Africans, especially Nigerians, are very reactionary to yeah. our approach, and so when we have situations like this, you have um, a lot of release of funds to help to mitigate this. But when there is no outbreak or when there is no emergency, and you require more funding for healthcare, you find that there is a lag in 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 the release of these funds. Mm -hmm. Our primary healthcare systems are in shambles. You have secondary healthcare facilities that are dilapidating in terms of public facilities. You have um, private sector hospitals that have difficulty in accessing finance to be able to deliver better quality services. You have various, um, you know, poor oversight of quality uh, of healthcare. You have various factors that generally plague our healthcare system right now. So I think that what is most important is that this is a wake-up call for mm. government and also for the private sector to see how they can collaborate to be able to build a resilient health system such that whether it is Lassa fever, if it's coronavirus, if it's, if it's Ebola, at some level, the system would be able to absorb that kind of outbreak and then you know we will not have people reacting the way they are reacting right now. All right, uh, thank you so very much uh, both of you, Mr. Elegbe and of course Mr. Okulaja. Um,